Sometimes when the world's not the other one is you an said, asha. Asha, the, the you root letters for that are Hamza, Sin, and Alif. Or Ya, you can say it's a Ya. And this is regret, really. Regret or sadness over an opportunity that was lost. Or an opportunity that was, I could have done that. Oh, I didn't do it. Didn't worry. You're looking back and you keep beating yourself up over what you could have done and you was right there. If you just did it, ah, things could have been so much better. Why didn't I take that opportunity? <laughs> a lot of times, you know, uh, 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 you know, people, uh, when they email, they email me, especially with the subject heading being sadness or depression or something, usually has to do with relationships. You know, there was a sister, I wanted to marry her, and I should have proposed that then she married someone else, and ah, oh, and I'm, I'm sad every day, and I keep thinking about how I should have got the guts and talked to her dad, and I didn't do it, blah, blah, blah. This is an asa. But it's also a kind of sadness that's not just on opportunities lost, but it's also a kind of sadness that is uh, that expresses when you did something bad in your past, and you feel like that bad deed you did, whatever it is, don't tell me, whatever it is, is go going to affect negatively everything you do in your future. Like your mistake from the past is going to negatively affect everything you do in your future. This word is al-asa, this is also used in the Qur'an. And this word, it's, it's important for Muslims to understand because we're living in a time where the opportunity to do really bad things very, very easily has been made convenient, right? So we can do pretty bad things, spiritually speaking, to ourselves and damage our souls with very little effort. And when that happens, then we become, we get into a state of depression. What kind of scum am I? To the world, the world thinks I'm Muslim, but look at me on the inside, look at the kinds of stuff I'm up to, how can I even live with myself? And there's this regret over your what you've committed in the past, and what most people do when they don't know how to deal with this, is they look at their past mistake, and they define themselves with their past mistake. What I mean by that is, I messed up, that must mean, I messed up in the past, which must mean I am messed up. There's a difference between I messed up and I am messed up. When people mess up, that doesn't mean they are messed up. That just means they messed up in the past. That is no guarantee that they will mess up in the future until they convince themselves that they are in fact messed up. The only one who can mess you up is your own conviction. Allah Azza wa Jal built you with tasweeb. You could get hit, that building could get hit, it could get rattled, but you can fix the damage and maintain the building. Or you could say, let it get hit some more until the building collapses, and don't blame the architect. And don't blame the art. That's you. You brought that on yourself. You cannot live with that kind of constant negative being brought back over and over and over again. There are mother-in-laws, especially in Desi culture, that relive sad incidents in the past. Or they don't let their daughter-in-laws, or the daughter-in-law doesn't let the mother-in-law, or the father doesn't let the son or daughter. They don't let them get over what happened. Just get over it. Move on with life. They can't do it. They have to bring it up. It happened 20 years ago. Let it go. No. You did not get married with our permission, therefore, it just makes me sad. But it's over, you cried about this for three weeks already. Remember all those tears? Remember all those, those dishes you broke? We, we did that already. Now I have children, and those children are going to get married. And you're still not coming to the wedding because of what happened for those, that's like 30 years ago. You're making yourself miserable, people around you miserable, because of Asa, because you can't let go of the past. And you're letting it cloud the rest of your future. Allah Azza wa Jal did not want us to have a heavy life or to have a heart filled with sadness. Actually, one of the descriptions of a heart that's full of Iman, a beautiful description in the Quran is Qalbun Salim. Qalbun Salim, so beautiful. The word Salim in the Arabic, you know one of its meanings? Healthy. One of the meanings of Salim is healthy. Allah wants to, the believer that comes to Allah on Judgment Day, Successfully, Allah says, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سليم. Except for the one who comes to Allah with a healthy heart, a sound heart, a heart that is free from damage, meaning emotionally you're sound, not just in terms of your iman, but these emotions have an effect on our iman. Fear, anger, depression, grief, all these things are directly related to our iman, and that's my next conversation with you. I shared a few Quranic words with you. There are actually more, but these are the words that become the subject of somebody's study when they're trying to understand this emotion from the Qur'an's point of view. And it's really a wealth of wisdom for, our, for, for bettering our living. And inshallah, one of you is going to do your PhD on this. And publish it, and then you can, you know, make a du'a for me on the first page or something. Okay. All right, so now, but this is my second section. Um, uh, I think I'm organized. But uh, the second section is uh, different cases in the Qur'an 
where Allah describes, in fact, that sadness is a reality, and you're not, and therefore you're not any less of a person for experiencing sadness. Iman, having good iman, having strong faith, does not mean you're guaranteed happiness. That's not. Those are not equivalents in this world, at least. This is a world of difficulty, of challenges, and of trial. So, for instance, Ibrahim alayhi salam, as a young man, experiences the trauma of being expelled from his own house. That's traumatic. Being kicked out of your home by your father, right? and being, uh, you know, uh, having to leave your entire village, your entire family. And then you have Yusuf who's being betrayed by his own older brothers. What's a little kid do? He wants to be like his older brothers. He wants to play with his older brothers. When you, if you're the older brother, you know, you always want to play with your older brother's toys. There's an attachment to the older sibling. Younger girls, they want to dress, they want to take, they, they take the older sister's clothes. She's always mad at the younger sister. You always take my clothes. You always take my shoes. Don't touch this stuff. Come on. You know, and the younger one will not want something until what? The older one has it. Has no interest in it until the older one touches it. Why? Because Allah put that affi affiliation and that, that you want to be like them. You idolize them. You, you, you try to talk like them. You want to be friends with their friends. You don't want to have your own. You want to, you always come into the room and they're hanging out with their friends. Cool, these are my friends. No, I want to hang out with them too. <laughs> and they won't tell you they want to be just like you, but that's what it is. They, they idolize you. They look up to you, especially of the same gender. But this child is betrayed by those he looks up to. That's traumatic. That's really sad. And then from the very beginning, we learn this child has such a close relationship with his dad that he's even telling him what the giver tried again. I'll try again. That guy he won't quit. I'm probably from Baruch College. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Baruch. <laughs> okay. So if you have, you know, with, with Yusuf alayhi salam, he was so close to his dad that he even told him what his, like he even, uh, like, uh, you know, talked to his dad about what he dreamt. It's not, it's not an easy thing for a child to feel comfortable enough and so close to your father, you don't even tell your dad what happened at school or what actually happened. You're actually sitting there talking to your dad about what happened in your dream. That, that's a real closeness between father and son. And the father's actually carefully listening. That's the other crazy thing he is. <laughs> He's really attentively listening to the dream described by his child. I have conducted that experiment in my home. Did you have a dream? Yeah. It was a banana that was trying to eat me. <laughs> and then what happened? <laughs> you know, I cried. It's not a spiritual experience. It's not a real start. So I commend Yaqub for listening to a child's dream. You know, the sun and the moon were doing such that to me. Uh -huh. so, uh, like, you know? And this is, I mean, put, we read the stories and we move on, but that, you know, that closeness, and then this child is stripped from his child, from his father. There, there's the sadness of the father. There's the sadness of the son. And there's one thing to know your son died. There's one thing to know your son died. It's another to not even know what happened. To not even know what happened. It's, it's traumatizing. That's traumatizing. I can tell you, I have, ha I have felt sadness in my life that I have never experienced in my life until after becoming a parent. When your child is sick, and when your child is shivering from a fever, and they're helpless, and you can do nothing about that except call Allah, and this child is holding on to you, and they're shivering like this, you know? And they want to take a food, and they hold the food in their hand, they don't, they don't even ha have the strength to keep their hands stable, it will tear your heart from the inside. It will tear you up from the inside. You cannot experience that kind of sadness. But that's a result of love. Love will bring about a lot of sadness. It comes with the territory. Okay? Because we care about the ones we love, and when they suffer, we suffer equally, if not more. Even if, sometimes even more. So this is, you know, in, in the case of Yusuf salam, and his brothers, Musa salam, and his nation. His nation caused him so much pain. And these are just some examples. You know, the Prophet salam, and Quraysh. The, the Prophet salam, and his uncle, neighbor, family, his own uncle, next door neighbor. What kind of guy? I mean, I, I talked about this when I was discussing the Dafs and Sultan Kautab, which is going to be the last part of my talk to you today. Right? What kind of a guy? Uncle, not distant, but uncle, celebrates when his next door neighbor, who's his nephew, just lost a baby. The baby just died in the house of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abu Lahab goes out celebrating, making noise that Muhammad will not have a son. His name will not carry on. Hooray! 
And they, they didn't have roofs on the houses back then. So it's like your guy, you're in the backyard and your neighbor's just got a backyard and he comes out and he screams, can you hear it? Yeah. That's gotta hurt your own uncle. Celebrating the death of your child. That, that's the, what the Prophet felt, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Any human beings, that, I mean, even enemies put their weapons down when they hear the general on the other side just lost a baby. They're like, look, my, you're my enemy, I want to cut your throat, but I'm going to let you give you a day to grieve, because I, I feel that pain. I'm going to let you, this is an honor among enemies even. He didn't even have that. That's the kind of sadness. And you know why that story is important? Because it's teaching us sometimes the most painful blows and the most traumatic sadness you will experience in your life will be from family. There will not be some stranger that will cause you sadness. It will be people that are closest to you because they have such close access to your heart. So when they can mess up, they can really mess you up. Parents can mess you up. Children can mess you up. Husband and wife can mess you up. Uncles can mess you up. Cousins can mess you up. Those people that we love the most can also hurt us the most. And that's something that's not unique to you. The Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa experienced these things in the most horrendous way. And there's a reason Allah put that stuff in the Quran for us. Because we, because we don't feel like we're the only ones dealing with this stuff. We're not. This, this has been dealt with before. These situations have occurred before. You were never alone. You were never alone. Through sorrow.